Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is A Night of Misfortune back again with the Triquetra Season 2. You're going to see a little bit of a different layout, and you're going to see some missing icons today. I was pleasantly or not so pleasantly surprised to learn that the coding probably changed, so something's wrong with the plugin I normally use. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the uh, light up of the characters, but hopefully most of you have been watching and kind of know who's who. But we are, as always, going to reintroduce our characters, especially because we're starting a new season. So I'm going to ask our players to run down the Discord once again and just do a voice check and also reintroduce their characters and maybe offer just a tidbit more bitch yeah a tidbit more <laughs> than you normally do uh just just in in the spirit of a of a new season new milestone starting with cooper you're up first oops sorry <laughs> no you good um <laughs> hello i'm cooper i am playing rita who is a um shen samurai and i'm hoping she makes it through this season without losing another ear <laughs> There you go. That's the wish. Everybody says a wish. <laughs> yeah, that's my wish for this season. There we go. All right. All limbs and appendages attached. Yes. There you go. Um, I'm Nick. I play Cornelius, the human old man rogue guy. Um, I guess my wish for the season is that all of us lose a matching ear so that we match. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, um, I am Jake. I'm playing Silky Johnson, uh, Goblin Wizard Extraordinaire. Um, and my wish for this season is that my co wizard, uh, Ivarin, realizes uh, that I am his best friend. My name is Miles, slash K Pock. Um, I play Pot. The um, Dragonborn Vengeance Paladin, who is our dedicated healer. Um, my wish for the season is that we find a spare ear for Ryder so that we all don't have to remove our ears as well. <laughs> this is like glass half uh, full, half empty type of a group. Here. And uh, I am. George, a.k.a. Spiff, and I am playing Ivarin, the very sarcastic spell-slinging wizard. And Ivarin's wish for uh, this season is to get a little bit of space from Silky. Dude's always Aww. hanging around. Hey, quick question regarding the ear. If Rita were to die, could we cast Mending on the ear since she'd be a corpse at that point and be an object? And we could put the ear back and then resurrect her? Is that a thing? I think we had a conversation in a similar vein to this when it first happened. When the ear, you, the, someone has the ear, right? We've still got the ear. I think someone has it. I don't know who. <laughs> Is it still an ear, though? That's the question. I'm sure it's like. Yeah. But anyway, it um, wants to be <laughs> turkey at this point. <laughs> uh, and I'm Dimitri, the dungeon master for this campaign. And with that, there is no really updates for the last session. So we will just jump in with the recap for season one of the Triquetra. <clears throat> in the year 2619, and the civilization of the world being gone, uh, sorry, let me restart. I, I am not ready today, apparently. Uh, in the year 2619, the civilization of the world is gone, erased by the plague. The members of the Triquetra survived in the prism led by an old general named Hugo and a blind goblin wizard, Riggs. The party is tasked uh, with retrieving a soul sword from a man called the Jackal, who leads a nearby group of scavengers called the Forsaken. They learn that the soul sword is something called the Temporal Anchor that will allow them to travel through time. The Triquetra's mission is to stop the plague from ever happening. The party's first order of business is to track down an elf called Termo Valen, a quest given via a letter written by a man called Beric Ackman, claiming to know the party members. Finding Beric in 2596 revealed that he has no clue who the party is, but he agrees to help them find Valen. The party storms the Valen castle in solitude, but are captured by Termo, who recognizes them from several decades ago. He noted, he noted that the party came looking from him, uh, 
looking for the infinite in the year 2551. Just as he's about to kill the party, Pot, a dragonborn paladin drawn by a mysterious symbol, uh, begins to shapeshift, shapeshift into a colossal dragon. The Valen Tower is destroyed and the party finds Termo pierced by a duplicate of the jackal sword. Termo's death did not seem to change anything, and the party returns to their time unsuccessful in their quest. They share what they have learned about the infinite with Hugo and Riggs. But before they could formulate a plan, the prism is attacked by the Forsaken, who followed uh, the party in hopes of claiming their supplies. Using a time loop, the party manages to defeat the Forsaken and capture the Jackal. Armed with the newfound knowledge of the infinite, the party decides that their next goal was to find Termo in 2551. However, their temporal anchor would not be strong enough to bring them back should the mission was to fail. The party decides to search for a new temporal anchor, a quest that leads them to the fallen empire of Vormandar. There, they bargain with the vampire emperor to obtain information regarding the location of the dwarvish crown in exchange for retrieving a crystalline sword from the Eternal Grotto. There, the party achieves their first victory of the journey and retrieves the crown. Upon the return to the prism, the time stream opens and spits out an old, wrinkly man who calls himself Cornelius. He begrudgingly agrees to help the party in hopes that one day he would be returned to his own timeline. Together, they return to 2551 and learn about the true dragons and the demon dragon riders of the apocalypse one of these riders the party believes to be responsible for the plague they also intercept a deal between termo and the blackhawks for a dark ritual book that seems to be able to summon one of the four demons before they could get their hands on the book however they are stopped by a scorched man who handily defeats them in combat by producing duplicates of himself he takes the party to the far past claiming to uh, have spared the, their lives by the will of the Eternal One. Attempting to return to their own timeline after being marooned in the distant past, the group exploits an ancient artifact to send them to the edge of the Astral Sea, where the party is sent back to 2619 by a mysterious group of humanoid creatures who seem to be able to fold time and space together at their will. Returning to their own time, our adventurers discover that the prism has been overrun by the Forsaken. It appears that they have gone, they have been gone for two years, and that the Jackal escaped and enlisted the help of a mysterious group called the Best, the Messengers. The Messengers sent several members through the time stream with an unknown purpose, other than to reunite in the Forest of Red. Riggs is weakened by the separation from the Strand of Knowledge, and Ozum seems to be missing. The party manages to persuade the Jackal to defeat the Messengers and enlist the Forsaken as unlikely allies in their quest. The group decides to wait, waste no time and head back to 2551 Solitude to retrieve the Book of Dark Rituals they believe to be in the possession of Termo. Riggs musters what little strength she has left to send them back in time once more. On their trip, the party experiences a vision of the Forest of Red mentioned by the messengers. The party manages to track down the book to a cultist group operating from near solitude. They storm their hideout to interrupt a ritual and retrieve the book. Doing so sends them through a temporal anomaly, as a result of which the party suspects that the plague has been to been altered. However, the party learns that unexplainably, the ritual stick still took place with the charred remnants of the book that they have in hand remaining in a ritual chamber below the hideout. Wounded from storming the hideout, the party flees the caves. As they escape, they see a green demon dragon rider of plagues emerge from the mountain range behind them. This brings us to the present, or perhaps the past, or maybe even the future, as we pick up with season number two, episode one of the Triquetra. That was a mouthful, but hopefully, if there's any new viewers watching, that would have been a good summary for everybody to, to catch up on the campaign. That was so, also a very good uh, way for me to check my notes were all accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's seems, always seems hard okay. for me to do a, a recap that doesn't imply new knowledge or interpretations. Yeah. 
So, I don't think you gave me the way. <laughs> so um, I definitely realized I focused my notes on a lot of uh, a lot of stupid shit though, like things that you skipped over. I was like, this is so important, like <laughs> like exhaustive notes on. Well, it I'm sure also it's diverting our attention. Somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, there's there's more than that happened. We had twelve sessions of season one. You know, there was like a whole s episode that I kind of gleaned over uh, that wasn't even really mentioned. So um, yeah. But yeah, so that's where we pick up as you guys, um, I believe you guys stormed this cave in uh, dusk, so the sun has fully set now. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're running away from this uh, mountain, actually, in darkness. And as you turn around, the mountain range explodes as this um, uh, green dragon, who is actually faintly glowing in this uh, greenish glow. Aww. Uh, emerges from the hole that he just created uh, emerging from the mountainside. And uh, without really, you're not even sure if he notices you, but regardless, he flies into the air after a few seconds just sitting there and um, disappears into the clouds. Um, and uh, as you see this, um, go ahead and everybody make constitution saving throws. Something that oh. I did not mention in uh, that recap is that throughout this whole uh, time traveling, our adventurers have been struggling with um, a sickness of sorts. They're not quite sure exactly what it is yet. Um, but oh, essentially, the time travel has taken a toll on them to the point where um, they can't really um, keep going too much longer because most of our party members are in at least two exhaustion levels, I think maybe even three, uh, which are permanent. They're, they can't be, as far as the party knows at least, um, they can't be uh, removed or altered in any way. So, um, all right, we're gonna go with um, Rida on this one. Um, everybody kind of, well, everybody else is fine, but Rida, you suddenly, as the dragon disappears, um, you see your uh, vision kind of glow go a little blurry and you begin to experience a um a vision and um i don't remember for sure who exactly had this vision in the last episode i think it was pot um, and one other i think was it somebody Maybe else Yvonne? as well i think there was a joint yeah it was pot and one other i think with the vision when we were in the temporal kind of thing was that it or just after yeah, or yeah. As you were, yeah. yeah, you saw the vision of uh, the red forest. You see this mm. uh, vision again, or rather, for the first time for you. But it's very similar to where the forest kind of rapidly changes color into this red, um, starting to drip a little bit in in the red. What looks like it's too too unviscous to be blood, so you think it's just colored water. But um, as you walk through this forest again, you see um, a, or rather you hear a distant uh, sound of um, a stream and uh, you see uh, another new thing in the, the vision. You see a humanoid figure, a dark robed um, cloaked figure with a mask that um, appears very similar to uh, the picture that I shared in the art channel. Um, the poster of the mm. Triquetra. Um, it appears he appears exactly like that, and uh, he stands in front of you, looks at you silently, and then uh, says, "No matter what you do, it will always be the same." And the vision ends, and you're standing near your friends once more. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's not very optimistic. <laughs> and uh, the rest of you guys um, heard, not heard, saw her. She didn't collapse or anything, but you kind of um, saw her go blank. And you guys are probably like still running, I'm guessing. So she kind of Definitely. stops behind <laughs> and stops moving for a little bit. Um, or... So we see, we've seen the, it was the green dragon rider. Did we see, so when you were saying that they flew off, that was like them riding on top of the dragon and they flew off. Is that? Yeah. Is so that the, the demon um, rider riding the green dragon yeah. um, flew off. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So like, or if we're crouching behind rocks, I'm just gonna be like, um, you all saw that, right? And I'm just pointing up towards like where the dragon was. Um, like that's that's gotta have been the plague dragon. Um, I don't know too many things in this world that glow like that, but glowing is usually a bad sign. Spoken also, like a, in that like same vein, true master wizard. I nod, not understanding, <laughs> not I'm not at all picking up on the sarcasm. Like, yeah, and uh, typically speaking, in my uh, vast knowledge and experience, uh, dragons exploding out of mountains are also typically bad portents of things to come. But can yeah, I just I say of the depth of your knowledge? I nod and I say I, it's taken a long time to be this smart. <laughs> Furthermore, and I'll just start. I'll just start like explaining like what, what we've just seen, um, like not contributing anything new to what what's happening. I would just like to say now ahead of time that uh, <clears throat> well when. When Pop figures out how to control his whole dragon thing, uh, I call dibs on being the the dragon rider of of uh, fixing things. <laughs> the dragon <laughs> and the dragon rider for good. Yeah, that. <laughs> Nailed it. You all slightly hear Ivarin sob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your group is so dumb. <clears throat> <laughs> what? Whoa there. Um, um so, uh, okay, so we're just in these we're just out of the cave. The dragon thing has appeared, it's flown off, and that's where we're at. Yes. And mm -hmm. and and sorry again, this is probably a dumb question. The mountain that just exploded, which mountain is this? So the hideout was in a mountain range near Solitude, and uh, you were uh, you found their okay. hideout in a in a cave essentially. So you yeah, think that, was... that it just emerged because you saw you also saw a portal when um, you saw the book burn book below in the catacombs. Mm. Um, so you saw a portal, and you're guessing it emerged from that because you guys didn't want to stick around, and you were almost dead. Oh anyway. right. So yeah. So um, to summarize, guys, uh, I think that the <clears throat> important salient points of what we've seen and done so far would seem to indicate that uh like these messengers may be maybe the architects behind all of this or at least know what's going on this forest mm -hmm. of red certainly seems important um and and sorry and did did Rita tell us about her vision or uh, yeah, I, I definitely would fill you guys in. Okay. And just to confirm, this forest is like, it's not like a location that we know or recognize. It's just kind of like a no. generic forest, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. There's nothing okay. really descriptive about it. Or... Um, right. I mean, but we've we've seen, uh, well, actually, no, I guess we, none of us have seen the forest. But, I mean, I, not having seen it, it doesn't sound like a real forest, like a forest that would exist in this world. So right. either it's it's got to be some magic plane shift timey wimey fuckery, right? It's got it can't. I mean, it's not like we can like you know walk four miles down the road and like ah the red forest of blood. Uh, and certainly, and certainly, this vision is very concerning. It feels almost personal. Like why would the, why would you have had this vision now at all time? Like of all times. So I we're being fucked with. Yeah, for sure. So, I would I would put forth to the group. If you guys agree that we may need to focus on finding information about the messengers. Um, I'm not I'm not sure that uh, that ch like continuing to dig down on Termo is going to help because we 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 got the book from Termo and this yeah, and we have happened. a copy of it right now. I mean, I think it's right. damaged, but we do have a copy of it right. <laughs> I, I think, think, I, I think we book. have it. We have the book, yeah. Yeah. We just saw the copy, or a copy, or like another one of that. That book one yeah. was up right. the summoning. And us physically possessing the book so that Termo couldn't do whatever he did with it only pushed the plague back two years. Yeah. So I think, again, I, I, think, I think that maybe Termo is not who we need to focus on. Maybe we need to focus on finding messengers and figuring out what the hell this forest thing is. And whoever the eternal one is. Like I wonder if I wonder if this guy is the eternal one. Because like why else mm -hmm. why else would a single person like appear to us in a vision after the after the exact thing we were trying to prevent happened? Like that's gotta be that's gotta be whoever this guy is talking. Oh, it's definitely connected, yeah. 
Um, is, I mean, is it's, it's what I would do if I was. No, I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm explaining it out loud, kind of like, kind of like, and I finish by saying, like, because what, it's, it's what I would do. Like, if I was an evil genius, <laughs> and there were people trying to stop me, and I had just succeeded, I would absolutely balk them to their face. It's, it's, it's arch villain 101. So, which part of it are you not, the evil or the genius? And I just look at him and I don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ivarin sighs heavily and says, unfortunately, he does make a good point. Like, the timing is just too suspicious. That's got to, mm-hmm. that has to, that whoever, whoever you just saw has to be someone important, if not the architect of all of this. Did, uh, when you saw him, did you see anything that looked like one of the runes, by chance? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't, did I? I don't think so. Um... I will let you do a perception check retrospectively. Is it the in the art channel? Is it the like first? The top one. Yeah, the top one. Yeah. First yeah. Picture, yeah. I'm digging that art. That's awesome. Have also have we looked through this book yet? No, you just got it. Yeah. Like we ended this session as you guys were running out with your mm-hmm. lives yeah. <laughs> for your lives and the dragon emerging. Um, uh, you did not notice anything sh- glowing or anything that resembles a, a rune. Okay. Because on the other, on the on the, and as an additional thing, we should probably leaf through this book because while while not probably the only thing that matters, it did uh, us possessing this moved the entire plague back two years. So it does have something to do with the plague. And maybe maybe and like Termo wanted it, and the yeah. infinite attacked us for it. Um, actually, now we should, we should figure out if the, if the infinite and the messengers are, are somehow interrelated. Did, might they be the messengers of the infinite? I guess, I guess that's kind of what I'm thinking is like, I wonder if they're, I wonder if they're two halves of the, uh, two sides of the same coin. And did we, we, sorry, we best inspect that book very carefully before we try to read it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So maybe maybe this. So so we agree that like we have to find information on the messengers slash the infinite, whoever the eternal one is. Maybe it's the guy in the mask. Uh, this this weird ass forest that you guys keep seeing. Although again, I don't think we're gonna just we're just gonna stumble onto it. But maybe the first step is to inspect this book very carefully and see Did if we, we can find anything that gives us leads towards who would want it. Did we ever find out if? <clears throat> I recall something around this where this drag, this demon and the dragon rider, whether it was just one of them every X amount of years, wasn't it? Every 500 years or something. We heard, we read this in the, in the library or there was something along these lines. I don't think I made a note about it though. I, um, I read that there are, there are four of them. I don't know that yeah. there was an, there was an interval of them <laughs> appearing that I, or at least I didn't note it that there was. I thought there was like an interval and it was like every, uh, the, years the yellow one, years the something. yellow one is tied to the famine that happened 200 years ago, 200 years ago. Yeah. So if we've got the plague expecting to start in two years, then what happens between now and two years time, given that this demon dragon rider is out the plague. Uh, thing is oh, already also, out. also, you may be right. I also wrote down that, uh, the red one, uh, war appears to be tied to the singularity that happened yeah. also about 200, 300 <laughs> years ago. So yeah, maybe every 100 years something happens? Yeah. So, so it is a single. So we've got two years before the plague actually takes off, yes? Uh, I, think we just, I think we just saw it happen. It so sounds like. It, to me, it sounds like we've got two years to make sure everyone gets vaccinated. Mm. <laughs> this is gonna not going to work. Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, God. And no one's going to believe us. <laughs> oh, it's too, too real. <laughs> um, DM, can I make a, uh, a? Do I have any knowledge? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, with my uh, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with with my history with uh, all this stuff, do I know anything about an eternal one or eternal guy? <laughs> make a history check. Okay. Uh, I can add a D eight to it if that would make a difference. Uh, I think you have to make that decision. Right? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Screw it. Why not? I got some despair. 
but that's you don't want to do FD8. That's you do not. Uh, Thirteen. Okay. All right. The shot. Well, I mean, I guess mm. I would like to do a thorough magical inspection of the book to make sure yeah. that it's not uh, going to, like, spit fire at us when we open it up or something. Can I, I, guess... can I assist him? Uh, just kind of looking over his shoulder and, like, pointing out if I see, like, any runes on my own. Like, I say, oh, don't, don't, don't touch that. Like, that's not do, we, do we want to move from this location and get somewhere Yeah, I was going to suggest we try to, like, get out of here first. We're, we're near solitude, right? Uh, yeah, we... you're about half a day from solitude, but yeah. Ooh. And what time so, is it? It's, it was night time, was it? Yeah, just it's just been uh, nightfall. I mean, and we're in the middle of a, what, like a field or like a plain. Yeah, like... yeah. Now, by now, um, you guys are kind of in an open area. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have sought some cover, like at least a thicket of trees or something. Uh, I, well, I imagine. Like a rock. I imagine you guys are like running and like discussing. A little bit, <laughs> yelling at each other, like heading back towards. We should solitude. discuss the book or take a look at the book. <laughs> <laughs> Instead right, of like, well. we see a giant dragon and a demon rider, and we're like, you know what? Let the book is. I want to read the book, right? <laughs> Instead <laughs> of like, where the fuck's that dragon going? Um, do we well, do we need to inform anyone about what's going on here? And can we? You know, like if we want, ideally, we'd want to inform Riggs. About what's going on. Uh, I don't know, man. Riggs, I think I think Riggs can't help us at this point because we're back. We're back. Yeah, we're back in solitude times, right? And we come. Oh, no, like... oh, we're we're in. What year is it? Yeah, I'm not sure. 20... Are we? In, are we? In the... You guys were sent back to 2551. 2151. Uh, oh, so we're back. In the, we're back in the. We're back in the past then. So we're we're in the time before the plague has started. Are we 2155? Like... 2551. So we're we're like a hundred years away from the plague starting. I think by now you guys would have slowed down, and you might like be able to find some cover. There's like rocks and whatnot, so maybe you guys like crouch behind one of the rocks. But you see no. You've probably been running for like maybe twenty ish minutes. Um, you see no sign of the dragon rider anymore. All right. Well, okay. I mean, it is the middle of the night now, and um, it's we already have like exhaustion, so we probably should just settle in and at least take like yeah a few hours <clears throat> to rest before we. No, that's wise. Yeah. Um, okay. During that rest, no, Pot uh, will at some point close his eyes and try to reach out to Mira. Does he? get any form of connection or response mm. um <clears throat> in what way are you trying to connect with her um how we essentially i want to make a phone call i want to call a friend <laughs> <clears throat> okay so i'm gonna see yes, the um, magic lifeline um go ahead and make an arcana check it's more like relying on her magic than my magic, or I don't know. Uh, where are we? Arcana check. This isn't a save, so I don't get the plus two. Good. There it is. Um. It's a nat 19. Good job. Yeah. It is a nat 19. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to. A <laughs> few DM. <laughs> All right, so what, what do you say? You're making a phone call. Um, I <laughs> essentially, like, the, the information I want to convey is that to notify Mira that this has happened, that we've got the demon rider, green dragon has been summoned the book that summoned it has been destroyed, but we have an identical copy of the book. We think this whole plague thing might, you know, this might be the, the spark or the start of the whole plague thing. And whether that is of 
um, <clears throat> interest for her to know and whether like on that cosmic level she needs to make arrangements or prepare or whatever, you know, it's just more like a heads up, like, hey. Mm. I guess to make it easier on you, I'll like Pot would say all that. Um to himself, you know, in the hopes that Mira would hear it. And I guess the question then would be like, do I receive a response or acknowledgement from Mira? Um, yeah, she would, she would respond. She would just trying to think what she would say. Um, I mean, she can just thanks for the heads up part. She would say, it, um, "The the path of the plague is only a beginning in your story." Oh fuck! That's annoying. <laughs> Damn it! Um. Pot's, Pot has two choices here. It's either scream, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Why can't you just do clearly no? Just tell us. So when Pot, so does Pot hear Mira's voice? Yes. Saying this? Pot uh -oh. will, from surprise, because if, if you remember <clears throat> last episode, he, you know, he was trying to communicate with Mira. He was trying to establish some kind of link between himself and Mira again. Mm -hmm. And um, that he was unsuccessful in that. And then now that this link, he's, he's, as soon as he hears Mira say that sentence, that line, he's going to open his eyes, which I imagine like breaks his concentration and maybe that like breaks the link. I don't know. But he's at least surprised, like, oh shit, like she's actually spoken to me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> does anything happen when Pot does that or? You don't Am hear I still... her voice anymore. Okay. And uh, nothing else happens now. <clears throat> um, okay, and then, yeah, I mean, I was just doing this privately while we're doing this whole rest kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's it from Pot, I guess. Mm. I guess um, <clears throat> since we're taking a rest and we're relatively safe, I'll go ahead and conduct my investigation of the book. Oh, right. Yeah. Go through. ahead and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. do an arcana check at advantage, which I mean, I think you're exhausted, so it would just be normal, I guess. 13? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, looking over the book, you... Oh, wait, uh, no, Silky was going to assist, wasn't he? Yeah, I, yeah I, well, that's, I why you got, this is... that's why you got the advantage. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. I just said, I, yeah. this seems pretty important. I would like to in genuine, uh, genuinely assist him in this. So, um, you and Silky look over uh, the book. Um, you find that it's written in a... Um... Well, we, uh, we, we don't open it yet, though, because... Yeah, we're, we're we're checking for like for like dangerous shit. Oh, we, gotta like... gotta yeah. You guys were gonna look at the yeah. Um, so just observing uh, outright, um, you don't see any signs of traps or trigger spells or anything like that that you can see just observing from the outside. I All right. safe to me, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I still want to make sure we move a safe hopefully safe distance away from the camp before we open it. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take like four or five steps away from a foreign. As I say, look safe to me. It looks safe to me, man. <laughs> um, if uh, backs up. And Continue to back away from each other. Uses his, uh, his walking stick to 
uh, <laughs> open the book. He has some. Oh. He has experience in this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you're just opening it, right? Yeah, just with the tip of my quarter staff. All right, you open it to a random page. Nothing happens. Just Nothing happens. happens. Tip. All right, I think we can start reading it carefully. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as you gingerly approach the book lying on the ground, uh, go ahead and make a uh, wisdom check. Mm. Would wisdom I be able to assist him with this? Like, if, as soon as I see him like not die from an explosion, I'll, can I walk back and just kind of like help him with that? Like, I, again, walking over his shoulder? Sure, yeah. Advantage. Advantage. Wait, wait a, a check or a saving throw? Check. Okay. Uh, can I? Oh fuck! Can I? It's help just him? regular, uh, so it's eight. Can I uh, give him my inspiration to re-roll that? Can I? Uh, it would take three inspirations to re-roll. I can give him one. Oh, we don't. Have, nobody else got inspiration. Okay. Um. Shit. Well, you don't know if anybody else got inspiration. Uh, <laughs> I don't suppose you have two inspiration, buddy. Oh. I can't say that I do. Okay, yeah. so looking at it, you find it written in a language you can't comprehend. All right, Silky, so you want to give this a try? Uh, sure. I'm sorry, you said in, in, in a, a language we can't comprehend? Yes. Well, he said uh, a language I, will... I can't comprehend with a, a very low wisdom roll. So okay. you're going to well, look at it and tell me, dude, it's just dwarvish. And I'll be like, oh, I will, no. uh, I will, I will <laughs> sit and meditate and I'll say, um, uh, let me, let me meditate on this for a moment. Um, I was quite a quick study back at the goblin school for exceptional wizards who are also very good at reading things with their eyeballs. <laughs> and I, uh, will spend an hour ritual casting, uh, comprehend languages. Okay, so it's you're going to stay in place for an hour? Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody else is resting, right? So we're like, I think this is, this seems like yeah, this I is a... Yeah, I think we're breaking the, for the night. Okay. Yeah, this, this seems like a very significant priority to to uh, fully understand before we move to the next So do phase. you guys set up camp, campfire and everything, or...? Probably just like a light camp, a little bit of shelter and a very small fire to, to you know, provide okay. warmth. Like not not a full on setting up camp. Bonfire, that no was... bonfires. Okay. Not a big one now. Uh spoken language that you hear, you can also understand in your written language that you see. But you must be touching the surface I'll, on which words I'll are do written. that I'll do that um that bullshit thing. Do you guys remember like in the in like the nineties? Like there was that there was that like infomercial for like speed reading where the person would like quickly wipe their hand <laughs> over the pages and they'd be like I just read an entire book in 45 seconds and I remember thinking that was so cool when I was a kid being like oh I want to read like that uh, and then it was just complete bullshit I took a speed I, reading I do that. class when I was like I don't know in 4th grade or 5th grade did you really? yeah, yeah it was kind of like okay yes you can read things really fast but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to comprehend them yeah, exactly. or enjoy them like, even if you yes. do comprehend them, you know, if you're reading fiction, taking your time with it is nice, you know? Yeah. Yep. So... But, but Silk, Silky's a douche, and he, so his 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 version of comprehending languages is just kind of, like, smartly, just, like, wiping his hand really fast over the pages and being like, ah, oh, yes, I see. So the spell we reveals see. that the uh, text is written in a language of chaos. And it's... That is through... fucking metal. And it's only through the spell that you even learn of such a language um, because you haven't heard of it before. Uh, and if you reveal it to your friends, none of them have heard about it either. But with the use of the spell, you uh, speed read through the book. Um, much of it doesn't really make sense to you, but basically it looks like a spell book of sorts for various oh. dark rituals. Um, one of which you think was used for... Um, the summoning of the dragon. I will. I'll lean right shoulder and say, "Oh, guys, this is just simple chaos." Uh, I think, um, like high chaos, if I'm not mistaken. And I kind of nod to myself. 
Um, and then I will convey that uh, most of it is useless magical drivel. However, there does appear to be a ritual in here uh, that um, maybe what we were looking for. Can I, can I, reading onto that ritual, like, can I understand how it worked? Like, um, and I would be specifically trying to figure out um, clues to the, to the nature of the ritual that might guide us to, like, who or what uh, performed it. Like, basically, I'd be looking for, like, like references of, like, locations or ingredients, something unique that, like, would, might guide us towards, like, a part of this world that we could reasonably, in, like, interact with the individuals who ultimately did this thing. Arcana check. By individuals, you mean the people who cast the ritual? Yeah. So basically, so, so if it's like if it's like you must find like the dragon egg from the highest peak of the world, and you're oh, like, oh, oh, oh well, there's so a, there's the only one of those around. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Or 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 references to locations. I'm basically looking for anything in this ritual that would that would perhaps give us something discreet to follow up on. Like if there's <laughs> anything unique mentioned in the ritual, I would be looking for something like that. A clue okay. for us to have direction towards. Exactly, like the blood, the blood of the of the of the maiden of the land. Like you need the you need the princess's blood. Only that one princess. Yeah, Arcana check. Arcana check. Uh, oh, please, baby. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, even though you seem to be understanding really well what you're reading um uh, you think that the exact steps for casting this ritual are not that they're impossible for you to cast but will ta definitely take a lot of time and practice and the spell the ritual to cast the big dragon is probably really like especially complicated so um you think you could learn it eventually um oh. it, it's it's possible but um, you do learn that in order for, I guess, the component for it is not really anything singular. Um, it's yeah. actually, you get the sense that it's just a high energy power source of sorts. So it's triggered by a very sudden release of energy. Big release of um, energy. Like an explosion. I'll, so I'm not sure I'm getting much from this, guys. Uh you know, it doesn't sound like anything anything in this in this in this ritual is unique that would help us on our next part of our journey. Um, all, apart from the fact that whatever this is takes a lot of energy, which I suppose we probably could have intuited so, just from the fact that it's a world-ending plague. But so is well, I mean, what is the ritual to do though? Is it to to summon the dragon? Is that what it is? It's basically this is a an opening up because he doesn't know. Need portal, yes. and when you say energy, like, like, does it specify, like, is this like the like sacrifice, or is this like, could this be like a volcano, or like something, something natural? Like, is, again, I may I'm getting too sciencey about, but like, like, is this just like true, true energy of any kind could cause this? Like, could we look for large um, fault lines and volcanoes and other sources of like of raw natural energy, or is this like you must again, like, is this like our, our we travel energy? in? You Could we travel into like the a... cosmic sea and summon it into a star? Which <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've learned well, our big if... burning balls of gas. <laughs> well, I mean, if if you're that scientific, <laughs> yes, that's it. But um, you don't think it's like a sacrifice, and you think that a volcano is probably not enough energy. But if you were aware of what a star was and all the chemical processes, probably along the, the lines of that. Or a significant um, release of energy that could be tied to a very powerful artifact, magical artifact being destroyed. Like Cooper's, I mean, Ryder's ear. <laughs> <laughs> Ryder's ear. Very important magical artifact. Yeah. What did you say, Nick? I, I was asking <laughs> if, they, uh, if the wizard boys mentioned any of that about magical artifact being destroyed. With that releasing energy. Jake? Uh, I'm, 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 writing, is... I'm writing this all down real quick. Um, what was the question? If you share that information. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely, I at this point, I'm not being a dick about it. I'm like literally just, I'm, I am, I would be verbatim telling you guys what Dimitri telling us. And for okay. once, Ivarin is the one pestering Silky with all sorts of questions about what Yeah, yes. So, 
total role reversal. Yeah. So, so I think I think I think Silky is Silky's an ass, but he's he's uh, cognizant enough that this is important to like not bullshit at this point. So I guess after getting that information, I kind of want to think back to when we were running towards the cave. Um, was there any kind of? Because I mean, we had been traveling there, and any kind of energy release from a powerful magical artifact probably would have been able to feel even if it was far away. Um, mm -hmm. Did any? Was there any trigger that felt like maybe the destruction of a rune? Hmm, good Ooh. question. Um, go ahead and make an Arcana check. Arcana, oh, let's, I'm really... let's do it. Arcana history, because I think you were in a state where you were kind of not really aware, but we'll we'll let oh. it this happen with an Arcana history. While well, I was making that roll. Okay, sorry. Uh, so sorry. Uh, because it's disadvantage. Um, the modifier is a plus three. Okay. I so think I'm, I think yeah. you only get a disadvantage on saving, right? Do you get a normal rules? Also? I no. I mean, the first level of exhaustion is disadvantage on all ability checks. Oh, all ability checks. I thought it was just saving throws. Oh yeah. Then I only roll a fifteen. I forgot about that. Sorry, dude. That's fine. so. Uh, it'd be a seven. That, no, um, you did not uh, remember. Eight. What about a twelve? <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. I will say because you're you, armed with this knowledge, you think back and you remember um, when you first kind of heard something happening from below. It really did sound like an explosion. And when you start thinking about it, it really relates to some of the energy. Um, not energy. Uh how do I put this into words? Uh, some of the characteristics of what you were doing in the past. Gotcha. Um. <clears throat> I, so you you said that it had to be a powerful magical artifact destroyed to release that kind of energy to to do this kind of thing. Yes. Um. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinking back on it when we were running, and I, I wish I had had the forethought at the time to think about it, but uh, I think the kind of powerful artifact that we have to be dealing with for that kind of energy would have to be something along the lines of one of the runes. Don't ask me how I know that. I just do. Um, but I, it kind of worries me a little bit. If, if it's something as powerful as that, uh, we we definitely don't want things like that being destroyed. Agreed. But how does that help us on our next? So I think the problem is we just watched the dragon. Yeah, we, we, we just witnessed this uh, ritual happen, right? But it's already done. So I think now I, I don't know. Now, now I'm now I'm torn. Like. Do we keep trying to prevent this from happening, or do we have to just like kill this dragon? It seems like it'd be it'd be smarter to try and prevent this from occurring, right? Definitely. <laughs> I mean, so that would put that would continue us down the pathway of like figuring out who's who's behind this ritual. I think I think this this represents a very significant branch point here. We've got a hundred years to defeat this dragon, or to prevent this from occurring. So I think yep. we should decide if we want to try and track down this dragon or should we keep keep trying to prevent the ritual? I mean, I don't think we stand a chance against like this type of a powerful creature. <laughs> I, I I agree. And did, what, what do you guys think? Um, I mean, the fact that we were able to delay it means that we can have some effect. Um, obviously, yeah. that guy in the vision is trying to convince us that we can't actually prevent. We can only, like, delay. I'm not really sure if I believe him. Um, 
but we have definitely determined that we can have an effect on the timeline, which is a good sign. Well, the other part becomes, you know, can we even go anywhere else in time right now? Is there any way that we could go forward or backwards? Well, actually, that's a good point, because if the prison has been destroyed, The prison was destroyed. Could, da, 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 da. It was been taken over by the. Yeah. The, oh, the barbarians. <clears throat> right. I just I don't know. All the other times when we've done something, we've been just pulled back without us doing anything. But we haven't been pulled back yet. I I don't know that we really choose to um i guess go in different directions of the timeline mm -hmm. yeah we don't seem to have any control <laughs> over it really so we should probably just do whatever we can here in this time right now agreed which is okay. what should um, we do we go try back based on the dragon do you guys want to go to where the dragon erupted from do you think there'll be anything useful there I think it might be worth having a look to see if there's any evidence, clues. Yeah. <clears throat> like the rituals. Again, like I think I think again, it seems it seems like our only lead is like is this book and the ritual and trying to figure out how they did it so we can reverse engineer, reverse engineer who they are. And then maybe also um cuz like Mira's a dragon, right? And didn't we find Mira locked up? in the astral sea or whatever it's called up there mm -hmm. uh so yeah i was just kind of thinking maybe if we could find a cage out there that can hold the dragon we can just summon the dragon into the cage yeah Ooh. i see can you imagine that'd be such a alpha move we just gotta find a we have to find a rune crush it in a cage and just like oh man that'd be amazing well, it has to be a cage that can hold a dragon. I, I doubt that if I just go out there and construct a cage out of twigs, it's going to work. I mean, yes. It'll have to be, it'll have to be made at least out of steel. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad we agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> the giant magical demon dragon <laughs> will need steel. Because <laughs> oh. I, th I think it's worth going back and having a look at the site of origin here where it was summoned and see if there's any other additional clues because i think we'll have a lot of time to do like philosophical you know discussions over like nothing we do you know changes it maybe it's got nothing to do with us maybe someone else you know has to do something or the red forest is that like a hellscape that we've got to go to or something you know but i think at this moment i think it's probably worth going back and having a look mm -hmm. i don't know what anyone else thinks no i like it because we don't have a direction at the moment. That's the we don't. <clears throat> uh, I agree. It's our best lead right now. Yep, I'm down. Okay, so I guess you guys. Uh... We run back. <laughs> yeah, you guys head back. It doesn't take you long. You're not carefully. super far from it. Um, and you carefully make your way through the tunnels again and uh into the catacomb catacombs for the first time whereas previously it was your familiar that was uh scanning through there um you take the the spiral or the, i guess the looping staircase down and uh you merge into um the room which i guess i could transition into yeah are, the, are the, the bodies of the uh summoners still there uh the ones that you killed on the top floor Yes. Yeah. Um, the ones that did the ritual. Good question. Um, if you check for that, you only find skeletons of them. Okay. Spooky. So... Do they look like they've been like, like all their flesh has been like burned away or like? Oh yeah. Good question. Um, do an insight check. Were they pre-skeletons? No, you think they're de fully decomposed. Um, 
I go ahead and cast Dancing Lights. There's four little, uh, four little fists flying around. Wait a minute. You said, you said the flesh decomposed off of their bodies. Yes. Very rapidly, obviously. Is, are, are their bones still bone or have they been fossilized? Uh, like how bone. much time apparently passed Insight in a check. very local area? Insight check, you say. Okay, get back to my it's a DM for yes. <laughs> yeah, I won't tell. Oh, damn. Apparently, I don't know. Uh, you don't know. <laughs> but one other person can try. I've, I've heard of these fossil things, but I don't know. I can't tell. Dibs. Um, mm. you think about 50-ish years. Oh, so there's still, there's still some flesh, maybe. Although, I don't know. Maybe, it, All right, 50, 50 years sounds like a long time. Yeah. There's no flesh on. <laughs> well, it, it depends. It depends. Because, because, I mean, we're talking about decomposition, but, like... Let's, see, let's Google this. How long? Okay, no matter what, this doesn't this doesn't make sense. Well, it's it's out in the open air, but it's yeah, the same it, time, it's probably closer to like maybe a few weeks, man. Like the rats and the bugs get to it. Weeks to several years for a body to completely oh. decompose into skeleton. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It really depends on the conditions. And also, I was thinking, like you know, insects are really uh, important in the decomposition yeah. process, and if it's like a magical decomposition then there it's not like insects are necessarily flying in and out and planting their eggs and shit that quickly i don't know i'm overanalyzing you guys should you guys should uh google the virginia body farm it's great oh god i hate uh, that i've thing. heard of that um <laughs> is is there anything on the um the tables or any manuscripts or anything that might um, give any clue as to what the group was that, like who the group was that was doing this ritual or what they, just anything as to what they were trying to accomplish or what they were using or anything like that. So when you descend down below here, um, you, um, the room is actually charred. So you see like evidence of a blast essentially. So you see like a little bit of remnants of furniture and whatnot, but everything else has been burnt away. Um, you also see the, the burnt remains of the book um, that uh, you have a copy of. Um, and that's it. Don't see the portal anymore. Oh, oh, and obviously there's also a, um, a hole <laughs> in the ceiling through which you imagine the, the dragon burst. I am. Oh, of course, duh. Oh, I thought he used the doors. <laughs> yeah, he like, knock, knock, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so from this book, we've gathered that in order to perform this ritual, you'd need to basically, like, destroy a rune or something equally powerful in order to gain enough energy to perform this, basically? Yes. Easy. If I if I ritual cast to tech magic, like because like because right like destroying a rune seems like it would also take quite a bit of magical power. Like you can't just like you can't just like crack one on the ground and like breaks, right? Like no magical. I mean, item. maybe. But like, what other what other magical item is that is that flimsy, right? Like magical item. Uh, DM, correct me if I'm wrong, but like magical items in this world, I would assume have some amount of resiliency. You can't just like you like. Magical armor doesn't just like and it's broken. Absolutely. I would assume. I would assume that like. I, so I would assume that that to destroy a rune would take some, some also very powerful magical force. You don't if know I about the runes, but you know like the powerful like really powerful artifact, sure. artifacts are like, they're not just magically imbued with whatever power they do, but they're also magically protected in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, if I just test detect magic, do I see any like re like residue in this area that would perhaps like identify whatever was used to um, like destroy the artifact that triggered this? 
investigation check. Mm. Is Silky saying this Arcana at the same time as he's doing I, it? I think I think at this point I'm just saying this all out loud. Because I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to brainstorm with you guys. So like if you guys have a better idea. Um And is there any way to like figure out what artifact was destroyed right now? That That's would also be helpful. Point. Yeah. Cause because I we're all in agreement here that we're basically just looking for a lead to, to inform our next steps, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Arcana roll, you said? Investigation Arcana. Invest, so as an in investigation and then arcana so it's uh so the way i do it is um you uh, average the modifier and you make the roll and you add the average okay it's still seven um so i just roll 20. yep uh at disadvantage because you're shit. exhausted where the hell's my oh my my uh um people sure it's turned get turned off Wait, how do I? Oh my god, the new tabletop settings are so weird. Yeah, everything has changed on us today. I don't. <laughs> uh, disadvantage though. Oh wow. Um. All right. So twenty four. Um. So unfortunately, because of the state of the room, uh, there isn't much clues. Let's see. What do I? What can I share with you here? Um, Do any well, of you guys have detect magic? If, yeah, if it helps, uh, I'll cast divine sense as well. To detect like presence of celestial fiend or undead. I don't know if that like can influence you or inform us with detect. the portal and stuff. No. Um, so the first thing you notice is that whatever exploded um, or the energy release occurred very near to the book itself. Um, that's probably why the book itself was kind of effed. Um, and the portal kind of opened up right in front. So like the book was like here-ish and then the portal opened up right here. Um, and let's see, sorry, I have to look this up one second. Think about that. Rest, I can do that. Uh, da -da -da. I have to remind myself of the schools. Um, whatever was released, like you can still feel um, traces of uh, divination magic throughout the room. Oh, that's my shit, baby! Um, all right. As a as a divination wizard, would that would I have any additional insight on um? like the nature of these divination spells uh tu, tu, tu. so i think um it would just be divination energy floating through mm -hmm. the room so you think whatever exploded exploded in massive amounts of divination energy okay and, um, um you also probably know that divination is one of the major components of the rune of knowledge Ooh. Oh no, I wonder if they destroyed the Rune of Knowledge. Yeah, that know. would not be good. Which rune is it that Riggs is for the time stuff? Yeah, I was wondering if it was the Rune of Time, rune of because these skeletons are all fucked up. Mm. She uses the but Rune of Knowledge for her thing? Yes. Or the Strand of the Rune of Knowledge, yes. Oh shit. So... So, does that mean we're stranded here? <laughs> Um. Hmm. Is this is this is this a lead? Could we find the rune of knowledge? Well, we, I think we're stuck. We're stuck without time travel. So whatever we're doing, we have to do it now, right? <coughs> yeah, I guess so. Shit. Um. Damn it. Um. I don't know, guys. What do you, um. I'm at a loss here. Well, I don't think we need to worry too much about that part. We just no. need to figure out... Because, uh, I mean, obviously if we change something such that Riggs never got the power to send us back, then we wouldn't still be here. Fair. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. That's true. So, I don't think that's too much to worry about, but we do need to 
figure out uh, exactly what happened here and, and what our next steps are. So putting that but, aside, what else do you sense with your magic detection? DM. I, and, and to summarize, so we have not found any obvious like literature, like scrolls over here that would elucidate the ritual. We have just basically found the area has been suffused with a ton of like high level divination magic. Well, everything else is singed. Um, the only link that you see is the book that you are pretty sure is the same book you have now. Okay. But it's charred, obviously. And burnt. Did we ever learn where the drag, like the demon dragon riders come from? I don't think we... We Hell learned of their existence, I... right? But we didn't, yeah, like where exactly... They come from i don't think we ever did um all i've got is that they are blue dragons riders trainers yeah i don't think we've heard it. um yeah. crazy okay additional crazy idea so we've got an intact book here and this book is destroyed so i'm wondering if like we've got if that book that was destroyed is like is was taken from the future like in the future we somehow lose this book and it's taken back here to use this ritual. What if we just destroyed this book so it could never be used? Like, clearly it's important for this ritual. What if we just destroyed this book? Uh, what if there's just multiple copies of it? Or importantly, what if we just tore out the single page that was used for the... Like, we don't have to destroy the whole thing. We just... just we just... We take the... We destroy the, the single page that's used for this ritual. Then what if we need to recreate the ritual? But why why would we need to recreate the ritual? <laughs> because the remember my plan already... about using the ritual to summon the dragon into a dragon trap? But but wouldn't it but wouldn't we just want to like not have the dragon summoned to begin with? Well you two... sure. But that's timey wimey shit. Mm. Uh, you two both carry around a book and you have your stuff in it, just take out the page of the book and put it in one of yours. Oh, I'm not sure. I I look over at Var and kind of like I'm not sure I want this in my Ugh. book. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, a pretty you, widespread published it, book you got there. Yeah, right? if you want, if you want, if you want it in your book, that's fine. But I I'm not sure this is the kind of magic I want. I can't even read it. It's in chaos. We could tattoo it on one of us. Oh, and yes. then destroy that. <laughs> we can that's put it on someone's so back. <laughs> ah, and make a great back tattoo. I, I don't know. It kind of like you know the the chaos writing kind of looks like those you know uh, tribal tattoos that were popped. Oh, up gross! Ew. Yeah, I don't like it. Just uh, get a puka shell necklace and you'll be good. Oh God! So, hey, I mean it's it's very far away, and I don't know how we get there. But Jakar is connected to the four demons. With the dragon riders of the apocalypse, right? <clears throat> uh... And Jakar, according to legend, is in the dragon mountains, disappeared into the dragon mountains. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's like useful information there that we could go to those mountains and investigate that side of things because it seems like Jakar. Actually, we're not going to be able to do anything to Jakar, what am I saying? But maybe that's where the dragons are all hiding, hiding out until they, uh, you know, until it's time. Where would, where would the plague dragon go? You think to those mountains? Probably if I was a plague dragon, where would I go? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> What would a, a plague dragon do? And make a home. It was a green dragon, right? Maybe that's a hint. Okay, what's that mean? Well, you know, green green dragons... Uh, well, dragons in general have pre preferred uh, nesting zones, you know, depending on what type of dragon they are. Okay, so what about green? Where does that nest? Uh, I don't know. Knight, how much would I know about uh, green dragons nesting 
Uh, let's do a wisdom check. Yeah, I don't want to meta game too hard here. No, it's it's different. My dragons are quite a bit different. Oh, oh God! Let's see. Oh shit! Well, apparently I know nothing. John so Snow. you do. Okay, so you you don't know exactly your question, but I will just say that you, as a person living in this world, you do know that there's true dragons. There are dragon born which can tr can transform to dragons, but there isn't actual dragon dragons outside of that. So there isn't like green dragons, white dragons, stuff like that. There are drakes that resemble the dragons, but they're less powerful creatures. So, and those kind of resemble the dragons that you're probably mad at aiming for, um, but they have no ties to like, so like, you know how in the D&D &D universe, I think the green dragons are like chromatic dragons and they're like mm -hmm. evil or something. There is no tie mm -hmm. between their color and <laughs> evilness, I guess. So it's just, the colors you know they're different type of dragon uh, drakes essentially <clears throat> gotcha okay so i guess what i everything i just said was wrong then. <laughs> uh, you also have to remember there's a demon riding its back maybe a demon doesn't mm. want a nest that's a good point mm. where would the demon take the dragon did we church. see the direction <laughs> he take just went up church. into the clouds did you say did you say <laughs> church uh, yeah, the temples. <laughs> he, went to play, he went to pray real quick before I unleash the play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real, I'm gone. So, um, I mean, the, the, where can we go? We have no time travel. We have no fast mode of transportation. Solitude is a, is essentially our only option at this point. But... Like physical movement. I think the only mm. thing that's really been hinted strongly is that forest, right? Should we look for the forest? Or, I mean, I'm fine with going to the mountains too, the dragon mountains you were talking about. That's very far away as well. I uh, think, yeah, I think true. you might be onto something there. The forest. Maybe, maybe we can talk to someone at Solitude or go to the library. I think mm -hmm. there was a library, wasn't there? And see if we can see anything on this red forest. I, yeah, I think it's probably going to be some interplanar kind of stuff that's not on this um on this particular Ivarin, but maybe on an, on another type of Ivarin out out there <laughs> uh, and maybe they have uh, some coffee that'll make me not feel nearly as tired as i felt the last i don't know two weeks uh. <laughs> i know that is another i feel like we need to I don't know if we can, but I feel like we need to address our like exhaustion and mm. yeah, we need, we need. the fact that we're kind of just like decaying. <laughs> I think we're decaying. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, smart we... boy school is in solitude. Maybe they'll know something. Mm. Maybe the dragons already made an appearance there, and they're aware. Well, let's but I go. Think... Yeah, from a physical movement point of view, that's our only option. Yeah, I think so. Do you want to go oh, there and just start asking around about... about... Hey, I'll see a dragon. <laughs> I'll see a dragon. Demon on the back? Yeah. Hey, your buddy? Nope. <laughs> I mean, we can start researching the Red Forest also. I mean, there's a library in Solitude. Yeah. I think researching the forest... Um... I think we've exhausted everything in Solitude, right? Or all the main points on learning about the Dragon Riders and all that kind of stuff. I think we found the books and whatnot. Yeah, but we haven't we haven't looked in the Red Forest. That that's another potential lead. Yeah. I mean, no, I was gonna say we look, we look in the runes, but like we've not been successful finding any information of the runes so far. And Termo was a no go anymore, I think, right? Because we established that he wasn't the thing; it was the book that was the thing. I yeah. think so. If you guys are all down with that, I mean, I think I think we've spent a, we've spent a lot of time on Termo, and I think we've not really. Like, he's not willing to help us. Like he's kind of he's kind yeah. of just like being if, a real shit we, about it. We've wrung all we can out of that sponge. I I agree. I agree. <laughs> so we we agree as a group. We're done with Termo. We're gonna focus on the yeah, book, I hate that guy. the ritual, and the yeah. forest. 
And yep. I guess the, the yeah. messengers, the messengers, and the infinite. Like, and we already asked yeah. about the infinite bunch. I think they are not going to be. That's not going to be helpful. I guess what I'm worried about is like the messenger is going to be like the modern day version of the infinite. Like, I think I think I suspect the two are tied, if not the same. Okay, so we would go to Solitude and begin researching the Red Forest and the messengers. I think are the only things we have not actively investigated. Uh, yeah. And all we've gotten from, before we leave this this virtual site is that strong divination magic, uh, artifact was destroyed. Probably, given the rest of the stuff we've seen, the ritual of knowledge. Yeah, I, I think have, so. Yeah. Okay. And everything else in this area is is destroyed. Um, as a quick last little cycle through. Like none of the none of the bodies are wearing artifacts or anything identifying. Uh, we see no hidden rooms, traps, sigils. Nope. I think you guys have been through this place. Okay. The rest of this place. All right. Here. Then back to solitude. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. As you exit the cave and uh, through the exit uh, entrance, um, you hear from behind you. A, a female voice saying time's a bitch isn't she god damn it and you turn around and you see a white cloaked humanoid the cloak is uh completely covering her uh you see very finely embroidered patterns on the seams uh and the edges of uh the cloak and from around uh it covers pretty much all of her but you see uh, her hands and a little bit of her wrists around which um, you see a familiar circling um, loop of uh, goldish greenish light um, circulating both her wrists and um, she looks up at you and uh, behind the hood uh, you see a female elf woman She wait, wait, a female familiar? elf woman? Yeah, Are... an elf woman. <laughs> Calm down. Elf woman, yes. <laughs> uh, Ivarin is surprised Silky hasn't spoken up yet and kind of prods him with an elbow. Ah, what? Sorry, I, I, I look up where I'm, I'm writing down um, literally what we've been doing in my journal. Uh, and I look at my like, oh, if it isn't, and I'm going to stop for a second. I um, am uh, Roxanne. I, ooh, um, dang, yes, you Wait. are. <laughs> um, oh, does she have a katana? What is that? You don't that's see awesome. Any it's on more her. like a spell. Oh, though. that's so cool. Um, uh, uh, and I am Silky, Silky Johnson. Johnson. Wizard oh. extraordinaire. Oh, we started talking over each other for a second there. That's crazy. Uh, yes, but I am a wizard and extraordinary. Uh, that's an interesting trick you've got there. Perhaps you have heard of my exploits. Yes, we've been on many adventures together. Of course we have. You probably want not... I'm sorry, what? Yes, I know all of you. Uh, really? What's what? my name then? And I, I look. I'm gonna look behind me, and I'm gonna mouth to. I'm gonna mouth to Ivarin. Timey wimey bullshit. <laughs> Make a history check for me. Oh, silky. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, you remember something about Roxanne? You heard that name before. Uh, In one uh, of the first two episodes. Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah, oh shit! That's why it's uh, ringing the bell to me. Yeah. Uh, they a parchment to us. Holy shit! This is the person who presumed to be Roxanne. This is the person who delivered the parchment to us. Uh, yeah. That told us about uh, uh, Barrack and Trim of Allen. Oh yeah. I once saw her features. Yeah. What? All of it uh, now is presumed presumed to be Roxanne, but I never wrote down like. 
why Same. we presume to be Roxanne, yeah. Like, they but, they knew well, her, but we didn't know her. The first uh, mention of her was actually from the Forsaken. What? Oh, I didn't write that down. Um, she was the one that told uh, the Jackal that you would come for the... She was, like, the prophet or something. Oh, or we, we presumed that she was... So, uh, who are you? <laughs> I'm Roxanne. And that's supposed to mean what, exactly? Oh, man. Well, I guess it is technically the first time we are meeting. But I suppose not in that case. I think it might be the first time we've met. It's definitely the first time we've met, and I would. I'm gonna just go full neck beard here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, like dip, <laughs> dip, do do like a what's that little thing like a like the like the like tip your fedora. Little, yeah, no. What's no. The, like, I, I do. I do, I do that little leg behind the other leg thing. I'm trying. I'm struggling to remember what's called. Curtsy. Like, curtsy. Curts, not curtsying. Oh, fine. I'll curtsy. Like oh, uh, What are you talking? And. <laughs> Yeah, bow. There we go. Sweep like, <laughs> I keep on saying. I keep on oh saying. I keep on saying. Um, sweep the leg, but that's not. That's not. <laughs> sweep the leg. Yeah, we're oh doing some judo God. now. <laughs> I immediately attack her. Uh, no, I will. I'll kind of give a, a little, a little uh, uh, nod, uh, and I'll be like, and be like, and what a sweet first meeting it is. Yes. Uh, tell me, how is it that you have found us here at such a, and I kind of gesture around at this like shattered remnant of a ritual site, um, inauspicious location? Well, like I said, we've been on many adventures together and uh, um, observing you. Hmm. Well, uh, you'll have to forgive me. Um, I'm not one to forget a face, especially not one. Uh, as lovely as yours, and I do not think you and I have adventured together yet, although certainly I look forward to any future exploits. Ah, oh, yes, your flattery is just as uh, prominent the first time as it is the last. Oh. Probably just as good, uh, too. <laughs> uh, and I nod, not, again, uh, uh, not picking up with the sarcasm. Uh, and also, I think I'm going to. I think um, the internal narcissism of Silky will prevent me from addressing the fact that she just alluded to the fact that she also saw me die. Uh, and uh, I will be like, uh, so uh, you haven't answered our question. Um, you've been watching us, and now we, we are meeting you for the first time. Uh, but what is it that has finally brought you to reveal yourself to us? Yes, I'm sure you have a, a lot of questions. Yes, like that question just now. <laughs> unfortunately, the majority of the questions I cannot answer. However, mm. to the present question at hand, you seem to be quite lost. Yes, at this point. always. Not just the point, all the points. <laughs> yep. it's, been, it's been a real struggle, Roxanne. I feel like you and I have known each other for... Long enough that I could just tell you that it's been just a real thrash. Well, to summarize and to allude to any confusion I may have as to which version of yourselves you are, let's remind ourselves of where we are right now. Number one, we found a book which is used at some point in the future or the past or the present to summon the plague demon number two you're currently in no state to combat or confront anything because you're just as likely to fall over unconscious from a gust of wind as from a blow of a sword and uh, number three you really don't know who your enemy is at this point does that about summarize it up uh, I nod and I say, um, I mean, there are nuances there that I feel perhaps are being unflatteringly, uh, glossed over, but, uh, but yes, that's about the long short of it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. You should have been a bard. I always said that. Um, but in any case, 
I think I think I'm here to point you in the right direction. Please do. We're kind of yeah. Point away, please. <laughs> well, just point thing, in any direction, really. Well, the first thing you should know is that you're actually in the year. 2604. This is the year that the plague happens. Oh, yes. The demon, no doubt, is the cause of the plague. And it was just released. Well, that does. So we failed, up. basically, is what you're saying. Well, I'm not saying. So we failed to stop it from being summoned. Which was our initial goal. <laughs> that is for you to discover in your relative future. However, I'm here to say that you will have to return to the prison. But how? Prison of this time? No, your time. Well, the prison, yeah, the prison is in... Shit. Uh... 2619. 2619. I can so we gotta go. to get there, but once you get there, you will definitely first need to look into your condition, because you clearly mm -hmm. cannot afford another jump. Yep. Agreed. And Agreed. This that, is true. I will help you with this, and she pulls out from her cloak. A um, a piece of folded paper and holds it out to whoever closest, probably Silky. Oh God! I, okay, I reach out and I take it. After which, you will want to look into the year twenty four seventy one. Oh God! Okay. The year that the first messenger was sent to. Oh. I like I like uh, tuck the the sheet of paper under my arm, pull up my my journal, and begin furiously scrawling that in. Wait, I did 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 you say twenty four seventy one? Yes. That's uh. uh two hundred years before this. That's like ten years or so after I got taken away. Ah uh, yes. Well, then you'll be able to tell us all about it and where everything is. Well, uh, partially. <laughs> well, and... look at that. We're going to go fix my mistakes and then we'll be done. <laughs> and uh, that should be all you need to know for the time being. Um, I... Hmm. And, and again, uh, you've already been very helpful, but um, why do we need to return to the prism? What is there? What are you? What, what, should, what should we be looking for there? Coffee. The prism is the way rigs us. She can send you back. Oh, and of course, oh. you probably don't want to be forgetting about Azun. Because at some point, if not already ah. happened, Riggs' ability, well to say it more correctly, the strand of the Rune of Knowledge will be exhausted. Mm. Uh, right. Speaking of, since you know everything, uh, is that what happened here? Was it the Rune of Knowledge that powered this whole thing? I cannot speak about what has transpired here. Mm. All right. Unhelpful. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Um... Okay, I'm going to unfold the paper she handed us. Um, it appears to be a map of the Crystal Desert with a location marked on it. Oh, boy. Uh, and I'll, I'll hold it up and I'll say, um, I think we've got our marching orders, guys. Uh, is the, ma is the Crystal is? Desert where the prism is? Uh, the Crystal Desert is... Um, so let's actually transfer to the map. Or is that a different desert? Uh, it's that? pretty close. Let me transfer, yeah. So if you zoom in, 
um, this area right here is called the scar. The prism is right on the edge of it, kind of like around here. And the crystal desert is this whole thing over here. Okay. Thank you. Well, we're in solitude, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, like, that's pretty solitude. far. <laughs> but if I'm not mistaken, distance is no matter. If you're if rigs can send you there. Another reason to how do we to the prism? And how do we return to the prism? Well, if you're ready to go, I like I said, I would assist you. And her bands around her oh, arms okay. begin to grow brighter. Oh shit! Should have led with that. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, she she did. She oh. said she said she well, could I only have one ear, us. so my hearing bad. <laughs> 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 Sorry that I didn't hear her. <laughs> Just to be clear, so when we go back to 2471, we're heading to the Crystal Desert at this spot? Yeah, so it looks I'm like it. I'm taking you back to 2619. No, no, but when we head back to 2471. <laughs> no, the map is to help with your condition. Oh! 2471. Oh, so we're just going on like a spa retreat, the and then... Yes. And then, oh, I could use a spa retreat. Let's do Desert it. Desert power. Yeah. Uh, uh, it'll be our on episode. Nice sand. <laughs> nice. Maybe maybe a sweat and squeeze. Well, uh, what? If you're ready. Grab grab a hold. <laughs> sweat and what? Is that everyone, what the kids everyone, are calling it? Everyone this pause is? right now and let's dig down on what he just fucking said. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, ho hold on, Roxanne. We got. <laughs> Apparently, I'm the only one who watched the later seasons of Arrested Development, so just never mind. Oh, yep. <laughs> okay, I guess that clears it up. Roxanne, what were you doing again? Well, if we're past that and we're ready to go, uh, grab a hole. Uh, pot squeezes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, does everybody... Yeah, I would like to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so assuming everybody uh, grabs onto Roxanne, uh, her bands grow or... Um glow uh, brighter and that you are transported through the time to stream once more except this time you feel like it's much less volatile and straightforward and you're popped out right on the outskirts of the scar right outside the prism yep. and now, see, says, how come well this is where uh, we part uh, quick question uh, uh, can you Tell Riggs how to do that so that it's more comfortable when we go. Yeah, that was that was that was great. That was like first class. Can I, like, can I, honestly, uh, this has been uh, such a breath of fresh air. I feel like everyone we've met while we've been trying to save the world has been just a real asshole, and you've you've been genuinely helpful. Like, can we get your number or something? Wow, subtle. In, Puts like in my due man. time, Riggs will tell me how to do it. And the last thing before I leave you, I will say is know that everything that has happened happened for a reason and cannot happen any other way. And she disappears. I'm going to turn to a bar and say, I think I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> Ivarin's going to kind of uh, sigh gently, uh, pat Silky on the head in an almost condescending way and say, I think you are, buddy. Yep. Do you think you'd ever work out? Sure. Why not? Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's go find Riggs. Uh, you enter through the outer walls of the prism and into the pyramid itself. As you enter the main hall, you see Riggs, Hugo, um, the Jackal, and a couple of the Forsaken Guards um, inside. And uh, as you enter, um, they turn to, to face you and see you. 
uh, Hugo um, sees you and you see he's kind of pacing as you enter. And when he sees you, um, he grows agitated and he says, they're back again. Nothing you said <laughs> has worked. He turns to Riggs. Has not brought us any closer to solving this issue. And he uh, uh. kind of like starts to storm at her. Uh, but the jackal, who is uh, kind of by the podium in between them, kind of intercepts him and stops him. Hugo uh, looks at uh, the jackal and he says, Out of my way, uh, scavenger. To Ooh, which the jackal that's their respond. word. And uh, the Hugo just looks at Riggs, looks at you, back at Riggs, and just storms off out of the room. Uh, good to see you too. Mm. Um, uh, well, yeah, we're back. Uh, Riggs says, uh, you you have to uh forgive uh hugo uh his uh his reason for the quest is uh perhaps the most uh personal of uh, of all of us did he also lose someone in this yes his daughter mm. His wife died uh, much earlier before, not from the plague. And uh, his daughter was everything he had left. But in any case, it is, uh, I guess I can't say good to see you. But I am glad you're in one piece, I suppose. Mm. So why are have we... you returned? What has what has happened? Are we sort of in private at the moment? Like, is it just Riggs and no? Um, Jackal? The Jackal is there and the Forsaken Guards. Um, Riggs is actually like on her feet now, but she's with her like she's leaning on her staff considerably. So <clears throat> I guess Pot will ask Riggs: Are we good to? Um... Are we are we are we okay to to speak here or? Uh, the jackal says, "Well, I think if you rely on us for your protection, you can rely. We can rely on you for the information as to the status of the mission." Uh, does Riggs do anything? Riggs like nod or barely stands there and she says, "Uh." I, I suppose he's right. <clears throat> well, uh, I guess the most important piece of news is the, um, you know, we went back and the demon rider, um, you know, the green dragon demon rider, uh, he was summoned, actually. Mm-hmm. This was done via a book, which we have, um, although it was an alternate copy or a, uh, a second, I don't know, just another identical one of these books. It was the identical other one that was used in the summoning was destroyed. <clears throat> but um, we do have a, I guess, a version of that book, if it's the, the book or whatever, that's timey-wimey kind of stuff but so we've got that on us um and uh wait so we, you have the uh, book but it was used to summon the dragon yeah item? there was a second book which we only learned about when we it was in a cave um there were god what was the this is out of character like what were the did we learn who the people were that were summoning it the the cult or whatever it was the no uh yeah, yeah i don't think we ever got like a name or yeah it was just that there's a there's like a cult of people that are doing this kind of weird shit up in the <clears throat> wait so if the book is used why don't we just destroy it 
I, I turned around and I was kind of, kind of like, eh? Eh? Well, <laughs> the book was destroyed. A book was destroyed. Simultaneously while we still have the book in existence. So I'm not sure if destroying this book is actually going to preemptively destroy the other book. This is a little bit above my. Well, it sounds like the book grade. that was destroyed is the future version of this book. So if we destroy that book, or this book, wouldn't it also affect the future versions? Pod, uh, Pod nods and slowly turns and looks at both mages. Pod has no, like, this is so far above his pay grade in terms of, like, thinking. <laughs> <clears throat> um, <laughs> and the timey-wimey stuff. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, guys, the future. It's potentially the book was used in the future. And if we destroy this one, then we can stop the whole thing. Right? In theory. Is there any reason why we shouldn't destroy the book? I think the... I think the reason that they wanted to hold off was in case we would need it for reference later. And to summon into the cage. Yes. Yeah. Um, we have th we had this idea um, that we could potentially summon the Dragon Rider into a magical cage. Yes, made of at yes, least but you steel. have the ability to stop it here and now. This is the mission right here. Hmm. <laughs> It seems too easy. Did we just destroy Was this it book easy? and then... You're barely walking. I am barely walking. I can't even see anymore. I mean, again, I... I, I don't see a reason to keep this book intact. Like, what... Yeah. Like, what possible... Like, we're not... Like, so... So, let's... let's I mean, let's go through it logically. Like, we're not going to use this book. Like, nothing in here... Like, to be perfectly frank, is something that I want to be part of. Avarin, I can't imagine you want any part of this. Like, this is all just, like, chaos magic. Um, Like, everything in here is going to cause destruction. So, like, we're not going to use it. By destroying it, we deny it to the people who would be using it, like, who would be... using it. I, I truly only see, like, a net positive. Right, but if you destroy it, then you are forever foreclosing on my summoning the dragon into a cage for at least a steal <laughs> idea. Damn it, Ivarid, we'll find you another dragon to summon to a cage. <laughs> didn't it actually, it didn't I'll actually summon, summon the dragon? It just opened a portal, right? I think I overheard you say that, right? Yes. So it well, just opens still. a portal to the realm of wherever this thing comes from. Mm -hmm. What if we needed to go into that realm? Ah! <coughs> uh, I, I really it. hope we don't ever need to do yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you're killing me here. Why would we ever need to do? So this is the thing. We would need to destroy. Oh, I hate you so much. Um. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> okay. Why don't we copy this ritual down? So we can always have, like, in one of our spell books, and so we can have it available if we need it. But we'll destroy the actual main copy, so the only way they'd be able to get it... Ah, <clears throat> uh, fuck's sake. No, wait, that's also a bad idea, because then they would have to kill us to take our spell books, and then we'd be fucked. Just saying, if, if, if the group decides that we're not doing the summon the dragon into a cage of at least steel, I will accept that. I love democracy. I'm just pointing out that that is what would happen if we destroyed the book, is that we could then no longer use it for our own purposes. I'm I'm okay with right. that. I, can't, I cannot truly see a scenario in which I would want to summon this dragon or open this portal in, in a, like, I, I, I can, I, I can, yeah, I see no way that this would ever be something that I would want to do. Or have I, me Yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> Perhaps we can destroy the book, and if we need to go to that <laughs> location, we can do it by other means. I'm not sure how, but maybe someone. I think. I think so. I, I, again, like I, I don't know. I just think this is the way to get do it. And in all likelihood, 
the last time we tried destroying some timey wimey shit, we all got fucked up anyway. So like this may this may not even be possible. It may kill us. But destroying things is always possible. Yeah, I think we should give it to to uh uh Cornelius. I mean he's already almost dead anyway. <laughs> I'm not even going to acknowledge that. <laughs> I, 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 I'll slide up over to Cornelius and be like, "I'm sorry, man. I've got I've got love to live for now." Oh my god! I've got to be I've got to be careful. Uh, sure, I'll take it. We're going back in time when things were destroyed, anyways. I'll take it. It's okay. I can I can take the book. I can destroy the book. No, I I, I know people. We could maybe get this destroyed. If you if you guys look up again, like Silky is like now like fifty feet away and just kind of yells with his hands covered <laughs> his mouth, like um, both of you can destroy the book together, <laughs> <laughs> buddies. I mean, are we are we expecting this to be difficult to destroy, or can we just put it in a file? And if you look up, Silky's now like a hundred feet away and is just calling at the top of his lungs, like I would try stabbing it first. Mm. <laughs> Not a Horcrux. <laughs> it opens uh, another portal. <laughs> I, I'll yell. I'll yell at Avar and like that might be so, but I still would rather watch from over here. So I think, and and I say this quietly, I I think we should wait till he goes to bed and then just at his pillow we, you know, put it there and try to freak him out. We should do make a big circle around his sleeping quarters. You know, a big summoning ritual circle thing, and then we we try to destroy it in there as he's asleep. We pour wine on the ground. Why? Why? Why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I don't have much to live for. I yell, why are you like <laughs> this? <laughs> so, do we actually know what the Rune of Knowledge looks like? Have we seen it? I feel like it's yellow. You've only seen the it's, strand it's... of it, which was uh, yeah. coldish yellow, yes. Or greenish yellow. <laughs> Everyone knows the color of knowledge is yellow. Come on. What did, they, what did they teach you in wizard school? The book was destroyed. The other book was destroyed. When the portal was opened. Mm -hmm. Why was the book destroyed? From the, I think, the I think everything, the everything was destroyed, yeah. Was it... Was it okay. All right, let's, in the interest of not spending an hour deliberating this, who who votes to destroy this book? I vote to destroy this book. Yeah, I do. So if one more person votes yes, then that's the majority. Cornelius, Pot, Navarin. Yeah. I, I mean... I, think I mean, what do, we, pros... what do we have to lose here? Yeah. I think the only the only thing the only advantage the book gives us is the ability to go into that realm if we ever needed to in the future. Um, I suppose. And but again, we would have to. I destroy... feel like the pros of destroying the book outweigh that one pro, you know, of being able to go mm. back into that. Do we um, do we need to destroy the whole book or just the one page? I don't think or it really just... matters. We can't, we're not going to use any of the other rituals. I think we destroy the entire thing, make sure none of it's recoverable. So, we've got the book right now, mm -hmm. and it's 2619. What year were we at just before? 2551? We were in 2604. Uh, no, when, yeah, the, when the dragon was summoned. 2604. 2604. Okay. So, if we destroy the book now, that it's in the future, does that affect... No, I think I think what must have happened is that at some point in the future we lose this book. It's taken back to twenty six oh four and used because mm. we're carrying an intact version of this book, and the book was clearly destroyed in twenty six oh four. So I think I think what we're, what we're doing is we are ensuring that in the future we can't lose this book to someone else and have it be yeah. used. Ah, uh, yes, you're thinking too literally. In the time that you're acquainted with, you must think in terms of the timeline of the object. 
uh, as in this thing was destroyed and somehow recovered itself? No, I'm saying you're correct, Silky. Oh, mm -hmm. hell yeah! <laughs> okay. Then, don't, uh... don't tell him that, it'll go to his head. <laughs> Well, that's not very far up, at least. From, yeah, from across the room, I'm like, I told you! <laughs> I told you all! You know what? <laughs> Smith losing inspiration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just called him short. <laughs> okay, so destroying this book, then. I, I'm I'm behind the legs of one of the other um, like Troy Quetta Measure members, like calling from behind this person, uh, using them as a human shield. Like, just go ahead and destroy it. <laughs> um, Riggs, do you have any recommendations on the method as to destroying this book? If we destroy it in fire, do you think it could cause any issues? I don't know if you know anything about this. I've heard Heck paper burns really well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, do we have a fire in front of us somewhere? Um, I will, I will, I, if, if I can hear that, I will just firebolt a spot on the floor, like an inch from Pot's feet. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you create a little fire. Sure. I, uh, so Cornelius has the book at the moment, so Pot will, like, extend his hand and, like, motion, like, if he wants me to, like, I'm happy to be the one who throws the, the book in the fire. Uh, I, I don't mind. I'll I mean... Drop it in there. It's just more, you know, the whole dragon thing. If I uh, go up in flames, it's not, you know, maybe that the also saves small. the future. Yeah. Uh, was it a, I mean, dragon thing or a demon thing? I, I mean, if you want to, you can. I certainly don't care one way or the other. Would right, you feel well, better if you were to do it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think it would make me feel better, yeah. Okay, here you go. Yeah. All right, I take the book. And I... Just before Pot drops it in the fire blast, or the fireball on the ground, he'll look over at Silky. And just give him a little wink. And then drop the book. Oh, shit. Uh, the book catches fire. And proceeds to burn. Oh, we did it. Okay. Uh, your Pot. firebolt... Uh... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say Pot holds his hands out and is, like, looking at his arms to see if any, like, warping, timey-wimey shit is, like, starting to happen. Uh, and nothing happens, and the flames subside. The book lies there in front of you, charred for a second, and then you start seeing <laughs> a golden-greenish glow emanate from yes. the center and yes. expand in a ring and uh oh no oh no is this how it summoned it and the book is whole again oh okay pot picks the book up uh sorry can we uh pot can you do that one more time uh and this time i will catch a tech, uh, cast a tech magic as that happens <clears throat> sure so fireball on the ground, drops the book in the fire, cast detect magic as can I, uh, magic yeah. is happening. Is that, can I detect the kind of magic that was? Uh, it's some form of high level transmutation magic. Okay. Magical uh, magic. Yeah, it's magic. It's magic. Um, all right. Shit. So, I mean, I'm not a mage, but do we think that this book is protected by a spell that is doing Pro this or? Probably uh, mending. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ivarin, um, he's might be right. I wonder, I mean, it, it couldn't be as easy as to just dispel that magic and try again, could it? Because it's, it's transmutation, Ivarin. Like, we could, like, it's magic that, like, exists in a school. It's not, it's not, like, time magic. Right, yeah. DM? Um, Arcana check. <clears throat> oh, you fucker. We can try it anyway, even if it fails. Uh, you think that... Would I get advantage because I'm asking Yvarin for his input on this all, though? Sure. Um, you think that 
whatever has happened is not inherent to the book. Not and inherent to the book. It's almost like mm. uh, so there's time, time magic. Reversal. Uh. Mm. So this is the first case of this happening. We've had freedom to do whatever up until this point. But there has to be some force causing this aside from, you know, it's just time. I, I don't know, man. This this might be some, again, I, I feel like we've had such a, such a, a loose grasp on how the time flow has worked this entire quest. I'm I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure it's worth our time to keep digging into, like, why it's reforming, because it seems like this is protected by, like, the time stream. Uh, and if, if we've seen anything be true so far, it's like some of the some of the stuff just, like, seems to be fixed uh, in the time stream, and we may just not be able to destroy it. Um, I, have a, I have a strange notion, and I don't really have any evidence for it, but I, I just, I have a kind of a, a gut feeling that whatever is restoring this book might also be related to whatever is sapping us of all of our energy mm. throughout this time stream. So I think I think we should do what Roxanne st said yep. and Agreed. investigate a way to restore ourselves. <laughs> and maybe in doing so, we'll find a way to strip the magical or timey-wimey protection off of the book. As much as it pains me to agree with Avarin, uh, that actually, uh, he took the words out of my mouth. I think that's, I think that's the move, guys. <laughs> Spoken like a true mage. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't say he was right. I just, I just happened to also have the same exact thought uh and that it happens to agree with what he said and that pot pot will like tap of um silky on like the back and be like i know you did i know you did. <laughs> so silky i think silky is like almost blushing but he would never blush <laughs> but if you were very 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 astute maybe <laughs> blushing riggs says well that's anticlimactic shut up riggs <laughs> I've had it to hear with your bullshit. You yeah, are a shut up, stream operator. You don't get to fucking talk to us about anticlimactic. Every time you send us back, we get jacked the tits. You know, we'll someone, I don't really want to hear from you. Why don't you jump the time from your shit? Okay. I, I know I'm, everybody I'm, is frustrated, but you let's... Up. I've, had to, I've had it up to here, and I put my hand on my head, but it only goes to, like, the, to the knee of the guard I'm standing behind. And by the way, I'm still like 100 feet away from the group. So I'm, I'm yelling this at the top of my little goblin voice from across the room so, um, with this fuckery. I imagine everyone is actually laughing how we are just now, like as this is happening, you know, in character, just laughing at Silky go off. I've, I've ended up inside of trees. I've ended up like inside of buildings. I've just, I was done, Riggs. All right. Either get good at this time thing or stop giving a shit. You know, in a weird way, he's kind of cute when he does this. Why you noob? <laughs> yeah, scout you. As they say back home, skill issue. <laughs> well, so you know what Riggs I don't want to hear it just get your time shit back together and send us to 2471 well maybe if I had the whole rune and I, Ozune I, I, back no, no, no. I don't want I don't want to hear it I don't want to hear it you've got one job that you've been doing if I'm perfectly frank mediocre at best you had You're one job frank. too and you've been failing at it We've been doing it. Well, hey, guess what? I'm only as good as the tools I provided, and you've been giving us, like, broken hammers and shit. I realize that analogy doesn't really hold up, but I'm a little agitated. Well, Maybe everybody's it's all a little agitated. Yeah, yes! So uh, not better, me, I'm just You tired. better take that goblin booty up and chill the F out. Keep my booty out of your mouth, or I will come over there, and I will swear to God, I will shake you with half of your life. I will beat your ass with this stick until so, your I am ass run, falls I am off. Running across the room to beat Riggs <laughs> up my bare hands. I'm like, I'm like shuffling off my robes and like throwing my books to the ground. I'm like, ah, right, this the, is a long time coming. You have my you. <laughs> I'm just swinging it. Like, I'll take you up to power with my bare goddamn hands. Uh, the jackal says, "Oh, okay. Let's uh, let's take a breather here." Can I bite the jackal in the shin? Oh my God. Uh, make an attack roll. Try, 
to try and get by him? Would that just be unskilled, like just a regular yeah. strength roll? <laughs> yeah. So, as he's biting the jackal, Pop will you say, your in Shen, Meow Meow Scratch. Because <laughs> he knows Meow Meow Scratch. Ah. Uh. Ah! Uh. Well, you're lucky that I forgot my brass knuckles in the other timeline. But I'll get you, Rank, you piece of shit. And you're lucky I've just been bedridden. Or else I'd walk yeah. all over your ass. <laughs> I'm trying, to, trying to like um, like assault an invalid. Um that's pretty that's pretty on brand. <laughs> You frenemy. Alright, I push I push off of the jackal and I go back and I walk across the room and I'll pick up all my shit. I'm just like grumbling to myself as I like like put all my wizard shit back on. Okay, well I guess uh we probably want to take a rest and chill out um before we set sail to the uh Crystal dunes or whatever it was. Sail? Sets? What are we? What are we going to use to sail there? A sand? It's a figure <laughs> of speech, you yeah. motherfucker. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> I mean, if there is such a thing as a sand ship, that would be pretty awesome. Ooh, What's like walking maybe, ooh, maybe like out of the room? Star Wars out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Ten. That's a sand crawler. We're talking about a sand ship. No, a sand a skiff sand. is like like the pleasure barge. Well, that, that's, that's a skiff. Yeah, that's what I said. It's not a ship. I'm I mean, going to bed. <laughs> a skiff yeah. is a kind yeah, of I'm ship. Yeah, I'm turning in. Bye, guys. We, you guys fall asleep to the sounds of me and Navart arguing over whether or not a, a skiff is a subclass of ship. Yeah. Nope. No, I lay down. Boat, not... I lay down do a minor illusion of just <laughs> some nice harp music. <laughs> And that's, drown that's it out. Cut, and go that's to bed. cut with the sound of an elf and a goblin screaming at each other. <laughs> Impossible. Okay, so you all just go uh, to sleep. I, I think guess, I, uh... I think I I think I faint from exhaustion. I I like I'm like halfway in arguing <laughs> with Avard. I'm just kind of like and one more, <laughs> and I'll just pass out. That's probably very accurate, actually. Yeah. So you, I would I would argue myself unconscious. Yeah. So you guys fall asleep. Um, you gain your level up stuff. Um, level up da -da -da. and uh wait silky is not 30 health it's 24 right i we level up yeah but you're at 24 right i was yes. but if we just long rested right yeah what's your max hp now 30 30 okay then i was wrong all right yeah you guys uh wake up in the morning um I'll rest it up, but your exhaustion from the time travel still persists. Other food. Oh, this is the uh, worst. Time to go to the desert. Yeah. Spa day. Water. I need water. Yeah, I'm ready for like a spa episode. Spa episode. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, so. All right. Uh, can we, can we, uh, do they have any supplies for us? Can we, like, load up with, like, uh, although I guess, do we know, is the desert, like, is, is it, is it going to be, like, dangerous to travel to this area? Like, would we need, like, desert supplies, or can we just go there? In our well, skiff. Well, it depends on how you're getting there, but the desert can get pretty warm, and, uh, by looking at the map, the location seems to be, like, around here, which is, like, deeper in to the desert. And we are here? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so that's... Is there like a... Oh, God. Um... Okay, uh... So weeks. Yeah, so... Do we... Uh, I'll ask around to like any, anybody who's like... Any of the question members. Like, so how do you guys travel in the desert? Is, do you guys have vehicles? And before you Animals? ask that question, you're like in front no. of a dude. You're looking at him and then you remember that Riggs can teleport you across... I don't want to ask for Riggs' help. Stupid Riggs. I'll I'll still ask that guy. I think also, I think uh, Silky Silky would intentionally not be asking for Riggs' help, even if the other party members did. I'd just be like, ah, uh, we screw you, Riggs. We normally walk. 
Oh, that yeah. sounds so much worse. Oh, oh god, we should probably just ask Riggs. I don't want to walk. Yeah. Oh, Maybe someone in. else should ask Riggs. Yeah, I I can't. I've got <laughs> too big of an ego. I just look I squinted Cornelius. Uh just don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey Riggs! Motherfucker. <laughs> Hello? Hey, uh. Is the tiny, you... tiny little bastard calm down? Uh, oh, you no. motherfucker! I... Apparently not. The, the answer is no, I don't know that he will, but. Uh, hey, listen, um, his ego's a little too big to ask you for this, but could you maybe send us to. Uh, the Crystal Desert area on the map that we had shown you hopefully last night, or this morning, either one. Um, and when you do, could you make it like a first class, nice, like, luxury travel where I'm not bashing my head off the sides of time? <laughs> yeah, Roxanne did a really good job. Well, maybe you should go find Roxanne. And honestly, Riggs, I would if I could. I would if I could. If we had any other option, you know that we would take it. Well, that's um, kind of rude. She Maybe says, you can leave uh, him. She says, I, "I'm still working on a on a better way to sending you back, but for now, I'm unfortunately that's it." All right. Can I like? Can I? Can I ask for like a helmet from one of the Triclutch people? <laughs> and, like, maybe like a mouth guard. <laughs> uh, he looks at you funny, but looks at what Riggs and then back at you and, and then says, "And I just shrug him up. It's it's a time it's a time travel thing." Just hands you over the helmet. All right, I will. I will strap that thing on for sure. All right, uh, are we ready? And to my to my mouth guard, I'll be like, <laughs> "All right." She uh, opens yes. up uh, the uh, portal and uh, transports you through, and you find yourself standing on the uh, on a hill in a desert. And you suddenly hear a uh, scream from above as you see Silky falling out of the sky. Oh, oh no. I can't. Can I try I'm to just... catch him? <laughs> uh, do you want to try and catch him? <sighs> I mean, like, how far up is he? Like, if he's like four feet, he's gonna, like, like get really injured. 20 to 30 feet up. <clears throat> yeah, I'll try to catch him. Okay. Uh, Silky, go ahead and roll uh, 3d6 for me. Oh my god. You did. Yeah, that's... Oh! So, oh my Silky, goodness. Silky, you take 8. <laughs> Ryder, you take 8 as he lands on you. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm never a great doing idea. anything nice for anybody ever again. <laughs> like, like, why would you, why would you grievously injure one of the people who you are trying to have to save the world? You, this is, this is so typical of Riggs. <laughs> you did kind of ask for it. Yeah. Okay, but also we're trying to save the world. If she had killed me, wow, what a, what a moron. Please, the fall from that distance wouldn't kill you. Maybe just break a leg. Uh... I'm half. I'm like. I'm like. I'm like a third dead already. We just landed. Okay. What? You know what? You know what? Uh, it, you, you know, know this. Is? Back in back in my day, there was a bard that came around uh, by the name of uh, Catherine Perry, and her, the words that she always said was, "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger." So I think you'll be stronger after this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was. It wasn't. Catherine Perry was, uh, it was, uh, Kellison Clarkson. <laughs> what the? Wait. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Oh lord. Alright, and that's where we're actually gonna take the break <laughs> for this session. Uh, we're gonna take about five minutes and we'll be right back with the second part of uh, session one. We'll be right back.